So this is a Medtronic uh, digital cell battery analyzer uh, by Micro Celtron. A lot of mechanics use these to test out their batteries and stuff like that too. So it's not like just a radio geek thing. I mean, it goes to uh, your, your gear heads out there as well. So I just uh, configured this to read only 12 volt uh, batteries and I put the temperature and, uh, and other parameters. I'm not, I won't get into too, too much details. And like I said, for this battery, for sure, an average that I see is uh, 450 Mohs or Siemens, one of those two. So let's check the good battery. This one here has got a, like, uh, a, a little sticker here. The last reference was 509 Mohs. So this was kick ass back in the day in its heyday. So, all right, let's measure it real quick. 504 Siemens. So this battery, even though it's old, it's still real good. It's around maybe dancing around the 95% uh, capacity. I'm going to measure it a couple of times just to get a steady average. Five hundred and twenty-two. Let's measure it again. Five hundred and thirty-four. So this one is averaging around five hundred, from four seventy-five to five hundred uh, Siemens. So this one is kick-ass. It's like new, even though it's old and surplus. So let's check the bad battery here, or the suspected bad battery. 282 in that measurement. Let's do it again. And it's supposed to be around 450. 282 again. Let's measure it again. 300. That one measured 300. So you figure this one is averaging around 60% capacity. It's working, but it's not going to work as good as this this will have more charge during the day than this will. This might last eight hours in this configuration. This will last uh, four to five hours. So that is the reality of coming out here and doing this preventive maintenance checks and to, you know, get your stuff in tip top shape. So here I got the new battery in service or within the system already. And I got my amp meter here, clamp on amp meter. And I'm averaging around 0.9 amps, almost an amp of juice being fed into this battery to recharge it from the whole charge controller system here. So that tells me that my solar panel, despite that little crack on one of the cells there, is still producing quite a bit. Uh, we're in uh, winter, the days are shorter, the sun is a little bit farther away, and I got some clouds there in front of me, so... Uh, Right now I got a good beam, strong sun going into the solar panel and I'm reading what I suspect or what I would expect. So almost an amp, around 0.9 of an amp. I think I'm supposed to get 1.4 amps of juice going in uh, when this thing is producing in its full capacity, 20 watts uh, with a 12 volt system. So that is kick ass, that's working okay. So right now there's a cloud going in front of the uh, uh, the panels here, the sunlight, and it's fluctuating between 0.8 and 0.6. Now let's say there's a tree here and there's some leaves. Here I'm going to put my hand in front of it and it drops down to 0 0.27, 0 0.25. So keeping the area clear of vegetation is uh, quite important because just that amount of uh, blockage there is enough to constrict your current going into your batteries. Uh, these are all in series, uh, the, the, uh, the cells there, so if you got a break here that's, or this is covered, that is is going to act like a choke point. So not much current is going to go through this panel here. Even, even though 75% uh, of the other cells are, are in, full, in full sunlight, this cell here, just because there's a little bit of shade there, that's just going to restrict your flow. And with the saw and everything, I had to do some maintenance here. 
That was from my last visit a couple of months ago. This cut right here. There was a branch here that was uh, <clears throat> had some leaves. And right here in this stump, the first day I got up here a year ago, yeah, there was a little bush here and I cut it right here and here. But then there was another little growth here a year later. And that was covering maybe the little corner here of the solar panel so within a year this did grow quite a bit to where it shaded the the, the uh it shaded the uh solar panel and the solar panel was a little bit back this way as well so i pushed it forward to uh sort of clear this in case it does happen again another thing i've noticed is a little sort of uh gray area here it looks like a little bit of condensation in there drying up and evaporating drying up and evaporating and it's sort of tarnishing up the glass a little bit and like I said this is a eBay special so it wasn't weatherproof very well so that's another consideration uh, about the quality of solar panel out here and you could probably use that roll up stuff and there's quite a bit of an advancement in, in solar panel uh, technology I don't know much about it but here I'm finding out the, the pitfalls of buying a cheap uh, low quality solar panel. It's working, it's working very well. I mean, it's doing its 20 watts uh, despite all the damages and stuff like that. But you know, you don't want to come up here too often. Like I said, there's a bear coming up here. All right, so uh, I put in the new transmit frequency on this. So if I transmit, It's activated and working okay for the new frequency. Used my manuals to help me do that, and I definitely needed the uh, pro the uh, manual for the Chinese radio, the TYT radio, because it's it's a pain in the ass to reprogram for sure, especially manually up here in the hilltop. Uh, I definitely wasn't going to bring up a uh, laptop up here, not an option. So it's good to sort of keep your manuals around so you could do it by hand. And I think I'm ready to uh, wrap this up a bit better with uh, uh, reflective tape as a RF shielding, radio frequency shielding. Because if, if you get any leakage here, it'll, it'll jack up systems here. It'll put glitches all over the place. So that's what I learned in the garage before I came up here. So that's important for these cheap items here, cheap electronics. So I'm going to box it up and uh, put it back into service. So that's an operational reality. You have to come up here and maintain your system uh, at least once a year. Preventive maintenance. That's uh, pretty much the schedule kept by most communication facilities. You know, once a year, twice a year maybe, depending on the importance of the uh, radio system. So that would ensure that your system is in uh, tip-top shape when an emergency arises. It's going to suck if, if something happens and you... Go to your uh, radio system there and expect it to work and all you hear is static. It's the worst feeling in the world just about when you most need it. So uh, that's the main theme of this video. Maintain your system. Observe what's going on in your surroundings as far as people using that frequency. Like I had to change the frequency because uh, there's some munis municipal place somewhere that's using it. Or some sort of factory. I don't know exactly. One of these days I might direction find it and, and find out for sure. But for now I had to change my setup so uh, I won't interfere with them and them interfere with me. Because if their signal is coming up here strong and loud, they may potentially jam me when I'm out in the backcountry out there. If I got static in a one place there, I may be locked out because the guys in the valley there is uh, overpowering my antenna here. It's called RF capture in, in FM when one radio is overpowering your radio and takes over your system pretty much until they stop transmitting. But uh, they don't know that. They're, they're in La La Land where I'm out here in the boondocks uh, testing out the, the uh, range of, the, of this little box here. Okay, everything is all buttoned up, secured, tucked away. Uh, I'm all loaded up, ready to go down the hill. Which will be much easier if I don't break my leg going down. And uh, one word of advice before you leave any site and you're working on gear is to do an op check while you're up here. 
do a radio check to make sure everything is operating the way it should. I check to see if the uh, panel is supplying voltage to the box here, and it is, so I'm good with there. Did a little radio check, and it activates. But that could be deceiving too. I am so close to this thing here, it could receive my signal and also transmit back to me telling me that, hey, everything's fine. But let's say you don't have your antenna hooked up. You forgot to put your antenna jack back onto the radio and you just leave it like that. Once you get about a mile away, you lose communications. Then you're going to have to hump back up this hill here to reattach that antenna. So check once, twice, three times just to make sure so you don't have to come back up here. So I think with this setup now with the upgraded battery, uh, realistically, I think this will survive out here for a good four years without a visit. Conservatively speaking, this setup here will, will be active because uh, if it's not discovered or whatever, so let's say shit hit the fan. Uh, it's about 20 miles for me to drive up here and about a mile hike from the road coming up. During a shit hit the fan situation, you might have to hump 20 miles to get up here. So my range, it's about, with this terrain here, is about 13 miles, 13, 16 miles a day traveling on foot. So you're looking at maybe a two to three day evolution just to come up here to check out your radio system during the worst case scenario. Not only that, you probably have to be a little bit slower because you're avoiding property owners. The two main roads to get up here is uh, flanked by property and they look like the mountain rugged kind. Uh, one, of, one of the guys, I met him. And uh, he had that house there since 1800s, late 1800s. So, uh, and, and, you know, he's got it inherited. But I'm sure he's going to defend that piece of land there uh, fiercely, fiercely. Along with another back road that I took to get up here with the vehicle. It also goes through the, these uh, little community there, uh, nestled in the backwoods here. And it's private property. You have to go through their property to, to get up here. So what I'm going to have to do is actually look at the maps and see if there's a uh, uh, a route up here. It's going to be by foot to see how to get up here without going through people's property because they're going to be at the at the at the ready and full alert when shit hits the fan. Because, you know, everybody got their bright-ass idea of heading for the hills when shit hits the fan. So, my thing is to keep this thing in tip-top shape where I don't have to come up here during shit hit the fan. You do the maintenance beforehand in peacetime, once a year at least, to make sure this thing is fully operational, topped off, ready to go. And practice on every opportunity that, that you get to, you know, identify the weak spots, the Achilles heel. Uh, drew winter, summer, and, and all that stuff. That is what you need to do to make sure you got some good comms up here or around your your area. And that's what I do with this stuff here. Already identified that I have to upgrade the system. That's coming up next. And it's just a minor tweak, tweaking and experimenting and stuff here and there to make sure that you know you come out ahead. When shit hits the fan, it's a whole different situation here. I mean, everybody's going to be on edge. Everybody's going to be looking at what's going on. And if they see you with a big-ass heavy backpack going up the hill, they're going to be, be putting two and two together. Ideally, during shit hits the fan, you would want to send more people with you to help you with the load. Uh, all I have is my wife and two kids. So, that's the extent of my group. So... I would like to build this thing to where it would withstand four years at least to five years of uh, not being visited as far as uh, maintenance. Uh, the battery themselves should last me a good 10 to 15 years conservatively. So if everything stays the same, 
potentially this could last up to 15 20 years uh, if nothing happens to it so that's one thing to think about but in the meantime you come up here you do your maintenance every year I am totally stressing that point you gotta go out here and test and maintain your system buying it and putting it up here and forgetting about it is not an option okay guys I gotta hit down the hill the sun's going down and I'm tired all right Gorilla Com going 10 10 my home, my home, my home, my home.